Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today an MFT Beast Friend stamp set card and Lawn Fawn's Peekaboo Pop Up Interactive Card Die, creating two cards with three cuts from that Lawn Fawn die set. I am going to actually leave the coloring in today. My aunt was over last week and said, Teach me how to color. You do such a great job. And I always think. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> uh, Self-doubt, right? I just, can I say I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to coloring. I just do what looks good to me and I go from there. And I guess that's really all we need to do. So I will in try to include a little bit more coloring. I speed this up four times for this section. So it probably took me about 15 minutes to do the coloring that I actually do in this, with this one image. and. A tree. So if that helps you with how long it takes to color, I don't know. I did stick with some really light blues for my Yeti skin tone. You could also go with skin tones on Yetis. I have seen both of them look good. I just love blues, so of course I went with the blues. I went with some super light warm grays for my Yeti's fur because I want his fur to be white, but I also want that depth and dimension so by adding a really light warm gray in there I feel I get that kind of polar bear fur look to my Yeti and I'm just using a flicking motion to kind of add some chunks of hair in there and then I'll blend it out with the next one down for my marker blend and then I'm just going to take my colorless blender which is basically like an alcohol ink eraser and that is just going to soften it all up once I'm all done. And then it'll dry back a little bit from here. So it looks different when it's wet than when it's dry. So sometimes you just have to walk away from it and come back to it. Or start on a different piece and go from there. I actually used my color guide from my reveal wheel. Or not reveal. Well, I guess it was a real reveal wheel. So my platform pop-up reveal wheel with the bat. So it was a couple of videos ago. I will list those colors on my blog post. I have to go and find them to tell you the truth. I don't know if they're offhand. But it's like a a deeper red color. I want to say like a dusty red. A wine. Wine color. So it's like a dusty red wine color. And then I went in with that dustier blue tone for my mug. And this was just some super simple coloring. Going in with I Start Dark, if you are not comfortable with Copics or alcohol markers, these are Uhuhus. To me, alcohol markers all color the same. It really depends on paper. So if you are not having great luck with blending, try Express It cardstock, which is a Copic blending cardstock. It's what I've used forever and I love it. I've done the Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound smooth and super smooth. And I get okay results with them, but I just like the feel of the Express It so much better. I think Amazon or Amazon sometimes has it on sale if it's like an open pack. I actually bought one recently, so I saved a few dollars on it. But otherwise, Joann's used to carry it, and you could use your coupon on it. So that's how I used to buy it. So I have a couple of reams here because I pick it up whenever I can find it on super sale. And so I'm just using a 6x6 paper pad from, of course, Echo Park. I think this one was called Winter. And so that's what I cut my backgrounds out of. And then for my front piece, I have this metallic white cardstock from Envelopes.com that I picked up at a steal of a deal a few years back. It's a heavier, it's a hundred, I'd say it's a hundred, 110 pound weight card. I think it's probably like 105. It's an odd number. I almost think it's too heavy to use on the peekaboo pop-up. I think that 80 pound weight is probably the weight you want to go with or even 65 pound for the peekaboo pop-up when it comes to the actual card because of those folds. This worked. It worked fine. I'm just telling you that it doesn't always fold as nicely as that 80 pound for that mechanism. And so because 
I did that white piece fully with the die. I can do a top and a bottom or two bottoms just flipping the side that my mechanism is going to work on. And I will include that I am still not very great with this mechanism thing. I end up putting it on, re-putting it on, and I probably should have flipped this one over. So I had done the other one off camera and I was like, you know, I can record the second one and then we can do it. I was working on figuring out, and if you've watched my Instagram lately, I have been doing mock-ups for my November card class that's coming up locally. And this was one that I was thinking about doing for that one, but I hadn't decided for sure yet. You see, my flap thingy ended up on going down. I needed to bend my things, actually needed to bend my things the other way. So I'm going to do it a couple of, you know, because I'm not going to actually go and figure out how it needs to be done. I'm just going to pretend I know what I'm doing. It's how I craft. Trial and error. So I'm going to do it this way, and I'm like, oh, that's not the way it goes either. Yeah, see? I did have it the right way the first time, I think, maybe. I don't know. I end up, you know, it is what it is. Don't watch me for, you know, how to actually put it together. I will show you all the wrong ways, and then I will find the right way to do it. So once I finally figured out how this one actually is supposed to go, and I'm pretty sure it's because my mechanism was backwards compared to my first one. Yeah, my mind just wasn't, you know, flipping it like it was supposed to. I am pulling in the one that I had actually done earlier and was already dry and secure on there, so I didn't need to worry about it unsticking, I guess. So I knew that the glue was dry for my mechanism piece. And then I'm just going to add some adhesive to this one. Test it out first before I go in and add some liquid adhesive to my Yeti. I like to make sure that he's going to stay. And so I like to add liquid glue behind him to make sure that he's, you know, all good and fun. And I did use that 105 pound metallic cardstock there. And it doesn't fold the greatest. I think 80 is probably the key weight to use there. And then if you need to, securing an extra piece behind for added weight just on that arm is probably a good idea. I'm going to fussy cut around the mug because I don't want it to take away from my little Yeti here or cover up his cute little face. And I want to show that that hand is kind of holding the mug on top of it. And then I'm going to put the Yeti that is holding the mug on the front in the center because I figure he's sitting here all by himself drinking his coffee. Or hot chocolate if that's your cup of hot chocolate, coffee, tea. I was trying to be punny and it wasn't working, sorry. So here's his little friend popping up behind him with a cup of coffee. And then I sense my mechanism is working right. It's not hitting anything that it's not supposed to be hitting. I'm just going to add in a little bit of glue where it needs to be glued. And then I will close this all together, lining up the corners there. And then I'm going to set this off to the side. And I didn't set it up high enough for you to watch me put the other one, but I just basically did the same thing. I need to get better at figuring out my placement on the arms for different looks, I guess. I just kind of roll with wherever it lands, it lands, and I go from there. But I haven't done any big, huge scene ones yet, so. This little Yeti has had all the coffee. He's like on his fourth cup and kind of worried about running out. But his little friend pops up behind the hill with another cup and saying, you know, I got your back. We're not going to let you run out of coffee. I did go in and add those trees. And then I'm going to come in with some snow. This is Deco, Deco Arts snow goop stuff. I got it a couple of years ago, I think, from Joann's. It would work a lot like the Tim Holtz snow stuff. 
which I should really try to put that like make it a little bit liquidier and put it in a squeeze bottle because that would be really cool for adding snow. I'm going to have to try that one and get back to you on it see if it works. So I'm just going to add snow onto all of my little trees there. Keep in mind when doing this that your mechanism might bump into the snow on those trees that is further behind probably shouldn't add anything that is in the path of your mechanism. I just tend to bend up my sides a little bit so it's kind of bowed and it doesn't hit them as much. I don't know. And then I came in with my glitter duster and added a little bit of glitter because I wanted some glitter and shine on my snow. And then for this one I really didn't know where I was going with it. I had my Yetis on there and I had to figure out how I was going to make it work from here. So I decided to add my sentiment on this one and keep it fairly simple. And to add, you know, without having to actually do any more coloring and cutting, I was like, well, the little Yeti feet that come, like the little footprints that come in the Yeti set from MFT are super cute. So I did the solid ones and then stamped them with some, I want to say I did pumice stone for this one to just give that hint of footprints in the snow. And then I came back later, so it was probably the next day. See, different shirt, probably the next day. It's how I craft this time of year. Nothing gets done all at once. I am going to line this up in my misty and then stamp my image or stamp my sentiment right onto that bottom panel. I'm going to do it in I think Chip Sapphire Distress Oxide Ink and Oxide Ink you can do embossing glaze on or you can emboss over Oxide Ink because that pigment stays wet a little bit longer so I just added some hologram embossing powder so it's got some definite glitter and glimmer to it. And then for this one, I'm going to take a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. It's like a big, I'll list it in the description box below if you are interested. So I'm going to ink this one up as well with that dark chip sapphire ink. And then I'm just going to stamp this one on top. I'm not going to emboss over it. So what goes best with a good cup of coffee? Of course, this little critter maybe already had three or four cups of coffee. Don't judge. That's what some of us need to get moving and function in the morning. So for the inside of this one, or I should say originally the back panel, and then I ended up switching it, but for the back panel on this one, I used that die that comes with the peekaboo pop-up set. And then I'm going to stamp my inside sentiment on there. And I wasn't great at not bumping the top part with my ink pad. And so to cover up my little ink smudges here, I'm just going to take the little snowflakes that come in that Beast to Friend stamp set and then cover up my little ink oopsies with those little snowflakes. I usually, for the bigger ones, I add three in of each. I kind of do triangles, visual triangles, I guess, is what I usually go for. And then with that smallest filler one, just go in and, and fill in any of that space that looked like it needed a little something yet. So I added it to the back because I was planning on just leaving it like this. No, I did not put glue on this one. Somebody above was watching out for me. I felt my first one still needed something. I didn't cut enough trees or color enough trees. So I went and shopped my stash. So I always have grand plans to get all of the cards done for Christmas. Does it ever happen? No. But I tend to color a lot and cut out a lot and then just not use them all. And so I save all of those little handmade 
sticker thingy, you know, cut and colored and cut out images. So, you know, like your personal sticker stash. And I save them. So I have little, I use the photo bins there and then some of them are themed. So I might have ideas for some of the things in those ones. But ultimately, I will go and shop that stash whenever I need to add a little something something to a scene. It saves time in the, you know, in the moment. I can't say that it saved me time in the beginning because I did color cousin and then I used them. But extras tend to go in stashes. And I usually have them, like, coded, like Christmas, winter stuff, spring stuff, food stuff, critters, that sort of thing. So, you know, and sometimes when I need to make a quick card, it's a fast make. I decided that I needed a little bit of something, something to that background. I did add some white clay snowflakes. Not that you can see them in the video. You can see them in real life a little bit. I think I'll probably add some glitter on top of them just to make them go. And this was the point where I decided, and I had added glue to this one, but I decided. I did not like the background paper to that one. I just thought it, can I say it looked tacky? It just didn't look right. And so if it would have been a plain pattern on the back, I probably would have left this one as a peekaboo pop-up without adding it to a card base. But because I didn't feel that it looked right, I added them to a card base. And because I did not add that first one with glue, I could go in and pull that one off and then add this one to a card base as well without having to redo that centerpiece. And I thought I was, you know, so smart. <sighs> this one was the opposite of the other one because the other one has the peekaboo pop up on the other side. So, yeah. I just come in with my scissors and kind of try to round that out. It was totally not working. I must have been like just not quite square. Uh, I don't know. And then I will add in that inside piece and then close that up. And there pops up his little beast friend with joining him for a cup of coffee in the morning. And then the second one, or my first one, I guess, I'm with you every sip of the way. Aren't they adorable? And that is the most amount of snow I want to see for the rest of the fall. Okay, just whatever I make on cards. So if you missed my other two Yeti cards with that Beast Friend stamp set from MFT. They are on Inky and Scrappy on Instagram, so you can check them out there. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week and keep getting inky over and out.